Hello friends. Today we're gonna to be diving into Ableton's 12 MIDI tools inside Live 12 that you can use to become a MIDI master, to kind of sculpt your MIDI masterfully and quickly, to grab inspiration out of thin air. Uh, and if you are looking to master Ableton, highly recommend you come join us in the uh, EDM Prod Mastermind community. Ton of great producers in there already. Also a ton of great resources on Ableton and everything else under the sun. The Ableton Workflow Bible in particular, if you guys check out the link below, will be included. So make sure you guys check that out. Okay guys, so first up, we've got the arpeggiate MIDI tool here in the bottom left. You'll see that the menu looks pretty similar to Ableton stock arpeggiator. And by the way, all the transform tools are located right here in the drop down menu. And then the generate MIDI tools are down here. For the arpeggiator, if I just start turning knobs here, you'll see it's arping our melody. However, if I have this transform button off, I could dial in some parameters, say quarter notes, an octave up for two octaves, and then I can press transform and then it's going to arp it in that fashion versus making changes live when the yellow button is enabled. And so I'll reach for an arpeggiator when I've got a melody that's maybe a little boring and I want to boost some inspiration in my project. So let's start looping, looping this here and see if we can dial something up. If I just select these notes, I'll only be making changes to those notes. So maybe we'll go an octave down here and have a little bit of a different pattern. And then let's arp these maybe a little bit more aggressively. We'll quantize. Duplicate it over. And then we will perhaps use our gate to shorten the notes over here. I'm gonna quantize again by right clicking. And let's see how this sounds. Sounded pretty good, right? With just a little bit of mathematics, you can boost some inspiration into your project and um, be on your way. Now guys, let's take a quick look at Connect which is essentially, as you might have guessed, a good way to connect your notes, fill in some of the gaps. So as an example here, I have just a kick playing from one of Ableton's drum kits. And I've arranged this so that there are seven channels above the kick and seven channels below the kick. So if I set the spread here to seven, and then I start to transform, it's adding notes, plus seven and below seven on the grid. And right now our density is at 100%, so our drum kit's gonna sound a little hectic probably. So if we wanna reduce our density, that's gonna basically reduce the frequency of notes. So this is a good way, and if you want, you can just, you know, basically keep, you can keep pressing the transform button to generate random patterns. A good way to dial in a drum pattern quickly. Um, there's also, you know, you can change the rate here if you want to have longer, shorter notes, and then the tie button is basically the probability that the note length will be extended to the next one. I usually have just been leaving this at zero. So let's sound, let's listen to a couple more of these before we finish this example. You can just kind of mute notes as you hear things you don't like as you go. So yeah, you can just kind of mute some of the things here that sound a bit wonky, and then you've got your own drum loop. So now let's take a look at ornament here, which includes both flam and grace notes. Essentially can add quick little hits either before or after your notes. So I've got just a little loop here from one of my tracks. And this orange here is our bass line. Let's say we wanted to add some flammed notes, either after or before. We could make it more of a rolling type bass line. You can adjust the velocity of your flammed notes right here. And then if we wanted to go over to our clap and mess with the grace notes, it works similarly, but you can essentially choose how many flammed notes you want to add. Let's go with one and we will go above. 
we're scale locked right now. Again, this purple button is enabled right here. So this note is showing up in D because we're in C major instead of C3. If we had this off, see how it goes down. So uh, these are scale aware, so keep that in mind. So we could add some little hits before our clap. And you could get some variations on your clap if you feel like, you know, oftentimes my claps feel pretty static. So you could just add some flams or some grace notes to spice it up a little bit. Now we are on to good old quantize, which I assume most people know quantization, snapping your notes to the grid. However, they've given us a very nifty little amount knob here, which allows us to choose how much we would like to snap our notes to the grid. So if you're like me, you'll record in a melody and maybe it's sounding a little bit out of time with your drum beat. So let's listen back. Some of the notes are a little bit too early and too late. So if we wanted to, we're currently snapping to the current grid, which is eighth notes. We could press transform, and now it's gonna be perfectly in time with our beat. However, it sounds a little bit too on the nose, a little bit too mechanical. So you could use this amount knob here this would be 50% quantization, and this would be 0% quantization, essentially our original melody we recorded in. Let's go with 50% and see how that sounds. Maybe 70. It's still a little bit too early and late. So I'm liking that. It sounds still somewhat human. You know, I played it on the piano, so some of the notes are a little early or late. But it's also better than just perfectly on the grid, in my opinion, because then you're just a machine making music, right? If you've got everything drawn in perfectly like this. So I think the key here is find your balance. Um, and the settings are pretty straightforward, right? We're snapping to the current grid, which is an eighth notes, or we could snap to quarter notes, 16th notes, eighth notes. Um, so yeah, find that balance guys, use this to quickly get your stuff in time, but don't go overboard with it so that you're not sounding like a machine making music. Now let's take a look at recombine, which essentially has three main parameters, pitch, length, and velocity. So let's say we had a little ramp in our volume, something like this. You can set it down here as well. Nice little side trance beat. We could move around this blue bar and change the starting position of that ramp. We could press the mirror button, maybe if we wanted to go from high to low. You can also click this blue button and sort of use your arrow keys to dial it in. Let's go over to the length parameter now and change some of the note lengths. We can, maybe we could just shuffle them, right? You can press the shuffle button or we could move them around with this. And now let's duplicate this channel and let's take a look at pitch, which is essentially going to move the starting location of our melody. So it should still be related to our first melody. We could get a little counter melody and melody going. Like that, we could just move around the blue bar, find a different melody and counter melody. Now let's take a look at span. And as an example here, let's look at a chord stack, sort of layering up an interesting chord stack using some of these options. So let's say you've just dialed in your chords. They're sounding a bit static, however. We can use the legato function to not only change the note lengths, but also add some variation. Some will be pluckier, some will be longer. And now let's go through these functions and just keep adding layers, right? You're making a chord stack. It's all about octaves, subtle variations. For this one, we will go an octave up or maybe an octave down, perhaps. And um, let's look at staccato, which is more for pluckier variation.
Let's make another layer, an octave up. And let's try the tenuto option here. Up an octave. And here I am again, adjusting the note lengths, adding some variation. Let's see how we're sounding. Sounding a lot more interesting, but it's still a little bit on the nose. And so we haven't done a ton of this yet, but really a lot of the magic from these MIDI tools comes when you start using them in conjunction with each other. So if we look at, I'll, I'll flash another example to you guys on this in a second, but if we look at a strum variation here, that's the next tool and essentially is going to allow you to strum your notes. So you can get the idea of how you can just keep adding layers, subtle variations in the note lengths, maybe with a little bit of strum uh, and just endless possibilities. So now I kind of just flashed you strum. Let's take a look at another example here. I've got kind of like a pad stack and it's sounding fine, but a little bit on the nose. So we could use our strum function if we want to kind of lead into the beat a little bit. And if I go to one of the other layers here on my pad stack and I just go up an octave, there's also this tension knob. So this is going to give us sort of an exponential type curve. So we could have a little bit of, because of course you could just offset your notes manually. But if we wanted, we could make a little interesting curvature here. So that's a good way to spice up pads. I know I've been showing examples with, you know, a lot of melodies, but just keep in mind that these tools can be used for any type of MIDI, right? It's not just melodic stuff. Um, so definitely use these curves for literally anything. It's a drum kit. You want to have a little bit of curve in the way that you're, um, I don't know, maybe this G3 is a pre-clap in your drum kit and you want it to lead into your clap. So start thinking about, and then maybe, you know, this over here is um, a some sort of Foley sound that you want to be the tail of your clap. And maybe this G note is the clap in a drum kit. So start thinking about how you can use these tools in all sorts of, of contacts with MIDI. So now we're on to the last of the transform tools. Time warp is basically going to apply speed curves to your notes. So you could have like accelerating or deaccelerating patterns. So if you're working with like a basic snare build, you could start to transform this using the time warp. And you'll see now that it's starting off a little more slowly and then kind of accelerating towards the end. And if we go back to our initial arped melody, we could apply similar logic, right? So if we've got, we could transform this in a similar fashion, right? So maybe we want it to start off kind of slower and then accelerate towards the end. You could also add a second node and get all sorts of weird combinations of bringing certain clusters of notes like closer or further away from each other. Um, yeah, I think it'd be interesting if you could automate these nodes. Maybe that's an Ableton 13 thing. If anyone's out there from Ableton watching this, um, yeah, more automations, please. Thanks. So now let's take a look at the four generate tools, rhythm, seed, shape, and stacks, essentially more geared towards generating MIDI notes out of thin air, but you can of course use them if you have some existing MIDI ideas. Rhythm is structured particularly well for drum kits. So I've got a drum kit here with just a kick soccer ball kick and we can choose a channel we can choose a channel and we can just start generating patterns here you see how this is generating patterns we can have more notes or less notes with higher or lower density we can shift it over um, so let's say we have you know eighth notes I don't think that's a half but it's sounding fine and let's put 50% split so now we'll have Half the time eighth notes, half the time sixteenth notes.
And now you can just choose another channel once you find something you like. So maybe we could go on to uh, short hat one, which is an actual hat. We'll do 16th notes with no split. And you can also change sort of here the volume, which notes are accented. This corresponds to sort of your volume ramp down here. So now we're going to take a look at the seed tool. And before we dive into that, I wanted to talk for a second about creative resampling because we've been talking a lot about plucks and pads and melodies, which are all fine. But if you start with a piece of audio that is already really great, you sculpt it, and then you're going to get something even better. So it's kind of a shortcut to sound design and one of my favorite techniques. So if you've got an eight bar loop right here, I have a track. I've pitched it up a little bit for copyright issues, but it's Burning Stones by Asterix. Really good side trance track. Super trippy, super cool. And what you can do is you can right click on this piece of audio and press slice to new MIDI track. I've already sliced it here in eighth notes. And so now we've got chops spread across our keyboard notes. Each chop corresponds to a different note on the piano. <laughs> Right, so the key is find a piece of audio that is kind of clean, maybe during a break where there's not drums or too many other elements going on, because now we've got some isolated chops. And so the idea is we've pitched them up. Now we resample them even further. So I've added a comb filter. I've changed the ADSR a bit. Now they're sounding like this. And so if we paste this down, we can now use our seed tool. I'm just going to delete all these notes because this is a generative tool. And we're going to go from C1 up to C7, which is the range of our piano roll chops. And we're going to just start generating. See how this sounds with our little side kick and bass. You can have more or less density. We could also dial in certain areas of the sample or certain areas of the piano roll that we like better. Maybe I like the end of the sample better, so I'll go back up towards C7. Spread it back out, keep generating. Creative resampling, ladies and gentlemen. Don't sleep on it. So now we've got two generate tools left, shape and stacks. And so shape is gonna allow you to add notes according to various shapes. So they've got up and down, you've got arc up, bounce up. Let's generate some with bounce up. And just as a refresher, I have scale awareness on up here. So all of my notes are automatically going to be in G major, my selected scale for the clip. And we'll go from G2 to G4. Jitter will add a little bit of randomness. Last up guys, we've got stacks, which is essentially a chord generator you can choose a root note, you can press generate and you'll get a chord. I, again, am locked up here. I press the purple button so that I'm locked to G minor. We can choose how many chords we want. So let's go with four chords and then we'll just start adding some inversions. Maybe for this last one, we can chop it up a little bit. And remember, use the tools that we just talked about in conjunction with each other, right? So maybe I would select all these, go to transform, and choose uh, span. And then I could change some of these lengths, add some variation.
Maybe I would go staccato. Maybe I would strum these. Alrighty friends, that's it for today. I hope you guys have now mastered the MIDI and definitely use these tools in conjunction with each other. While you're working, keep that piece of your brain open and think, hmm, maybe this isn't the best idea. I'm just gonna let Ableton spit out a bunch of MIDI for me. Maybe I'm gonna reach for the strum tool to add a little bit of humanization to my chord. All those things can be very useful while you're working on the fly. And of course, guys, hop in that EDM Proud Mastermind community, get that Ableton Workflow Bible, and also hop in the comments and share any MIDI ideas that I didn't mention down below. All right, guys, peace.